Hello everyone, this is Manjula Devi P, working as Assistant Professor in GFGC Kanakpura. In this session, I am talking about a strategic management of BBA 6 semester of Bangalore University. In that unit 3 strategic planning, in this chapter, we are discussing about expansion strategy. So, what is the meaning of expansion strategy and what are the different types of expansion strategy that the company follows. So, there are around 5 types. In that 5 types, we are discussing 3 in detail in this session. The remaining 2 we will discuss in the next session. So, what is expansion? The name itself indicates expansion means growth where you are enlarging your scale of operation or you are venturing out your uh, operate in a new market, new product into a new business. So, expansion is where it attempts to achieve high growths as compared to past achievements. So, here your focus is on the achievements of high growth compared to your previous achievements. So, here in other words, if I want, if you want it in a very simple word, when a firm aims to grow considerably by broadening the scope of one of its business operation in the prospective of, uh, in the prospective of customer groups, customer functions and technology alternatives either individually or jointly, then it falls expansion strategy. So, now when you are broadening the scope of your operation, maybe in terms of customer groups. So, you had one set of segment or one type of customers in the market. Now, you want to broaden, you want to include few more. So, you want to expand or maybe the functions. So, your fu function or operations. So, you were confined to one particular function or one particular industry or field. Now, you want to again expand it. Then again or the technology alternatives, the way the production was done or the way things were happening. Now, you want to find a different way, a new way or uh, maybe a more efficient way of happening. So, you are changing the technology that you are following either individually or jointly or either you are doing it alone or maybe you are combining with somebody or you are taking somebody into a uh, thing and you are expanding your business operation. So, let us see what are the different strategies that are followed when company wants to go for this expansion or growth. So, the expansion strategies could be any of this 5 types. It could be a concentration expansion strategy or integration expansion strategy or diversification expansion strategy, cooperation or internationalization of the expansion, one of the expansion strategy. As I said earlier in this uh, session, we will talk about the first three concentration, integration and diversification. The remaining two we will discuss in detail in the next session. So, now let us say what is concentration strategy. So, the general meaning of concentrate is you are concentrating on something, on one focusing, is not it? So, now let us see what will be the focus of the business in this strategy. The expansion through concentration is the first level or form of expansion of grand strategy like the corporate strategy is also called as grand strategy. So, here in this concentration what are you doing basically? The investment resources in the product line. So, you are investing in the product line like say you had a toothpaste manufacturing business. Now, you are also having a mouthwash, you are also having a toothbrush, you are also adding tongue cleaner or you are also having uh, what do you call uh, anything related to that particular field like you are concentrating on that entire say oral health products okay, or oral hygiene products. So, that means you are investing the resources on the product line. Then catering to the needs of the identified market with the help of proven and tested technology. Yeah, this is again important, you are not entering or doing something altogether a new thing. You are doing in the same line of business, you are expanding your operation, 
in the same market basically say i was talking about tooth uh, oral hygiene so you had toothpaste now you have come up with a maybe in the same toothpaste you have come up with different variants of toothpaste for sensitivity or for kids or for a different flavor then you are coming up with the mouthwash we are coming with, you are coming up with a uh, toothbrush again in toothbrush there are many varieties of toothbrush isn't it that means in the same market with the same uh, similar custom base you are expanding your business and of course here uh, you are using the proven and tested technology you are not doing something altogether new then simply the strategy followed when an organization coincides resources into one or more of its business in the context of so now here in this case in the concentration itself you can have three different varieties of concentration in the context of consumer needs first one you are uh, expanding your business operation so that you can cater your consumers in a better way so your consumer needs are not confined to just one product which you are serving so you are adding more products to the product line then functions and technology alternatives so again in the concentration what you are doing you are uh, maybe you are changing your uh, your functional uh, you know approach or your technology the technology that you are using maybe it was outdated or maybe it had it was requiring a replacement so you are changing the technology maybe you are uh changing the machineries or your processes so even that is considered as concentration then either individually or collectively as i said you are doing it alone or you are taking somebody as your strategic partner or you are having this alliance with someone and you are carrying on this now concentration can happen in these ways okay concentration anyway is part of expansion strategy one of the way of expanding uh, your business in that you are concentrating on the on the same market now what happens in this so you can have one way of doing con uh, concentration strategy existing product in the existing market like i was talking about a toothpaste it's an existing product you are already having a market share in that so what you are doing you are either increasing your scale of operation or you are of the same product you are producing many different variants okay you are producing something uh, maybe uh, of uh, in the toothpaste itself you are producing of different flavors or you are producing of uh, say sensitivity or you are producing uh, what i'm trying to say uh, you are expanding your operation in the same product in the same market you are not entering to the new market same market same product but you are increasing the scale or you are bringing some change in the product then the next one existing product but you are entering into the new market so in the concentration what happens the product is same so i took an example of toothpaste it is same but now you are maybe you were in particular one regional level your operation was now you are expanding your market maybe you are going to the state level or you are taking three more uh, regions for your reach for reaching the customers so where with the same product you are increasing the scale and you are reaching you are trying to reach a broader section then the next one you are in the same market but you are trying to introduce a new product as i said say you are already there in the toothpaste market so you also have come up with the toothbrushes of the same brand suppose if i take the example of colgate colgate have uh, earlier colgate was only having a tooth powder there was no toothpaste before like long long ago then the concept of paste came toothpaste colgate toothpaste now we see so many varieties of colgate like you now we get in the colgate ayurvedic segment has come ayurvedic toothpaste uh, from colgate then colgate brushes have come colgate mouthwash has come so that means with the same uh, in the same market they have come up with new products even that is one of the type of concentration strategy where either with the existing product they are op operating in the existing market but with a larger scale than it was before or with the existing product they are trying to enter into the new market 
may be different geographical location or in the same market they are trying to introduce a new product that is about the expansion through concentration. The next thing is expansion through diversification. So, what is diversification? So, diversification means into different. Now, what is this diversification in this con context? The expansion through diversification is followed when an organization aims at changing the business definition. So, when the organization wants to change its business definition, maybe change its business outlook either by developing a new product where you are entering into a new product, expanding into a new market where you are going to a new market or again either individually or jointly. So, here in the diversification say I was again I take the example of toothpaste, you were into toothpaste now you also started soap okay, or you also started hand wash. Okay. So, that is through diversification. A firm adopts the expansion through diversification strategy to prepare itself to overcome economic downturns. See always diversification is considered to be uh, you know uh, could be a solution for risk for reducing the risk because if you are facing loss in one particular segment or one particular product you can gain through the other product. So, that is why it is always better to keep different products in your uh, company. So, where you are having a toothpaste, you are having soap, maybe you are also having shampoo in your uh, company's product list. So, that anything, anything goes wrong in one product, so you can get it in the other one. So, diversification again can be of two types. First one concentric diversification, the other one conglomerate diversification. What is concentric? So, here as the name indicates concentrating you are focusing on the similar product line. As I said you are uh, uh, I was giving you example of toothpaste then toothbrush then soap then hand wash that means they are all in basically one line of FMCG is not it. They all come in the hygiene and maintenance that means you are concentrating on the same similar product line. Conglomerate is altogether different where suppose if I talk about reliance, reliance is a conglomerate because you find reliance in every segment. You have reliance petroleum, you have reliance uh, communication, you have reliance uh, what do you call uh, jewelry, you have reliance in FMCG, you have reliance in even food footwares, you have reliance footprints as one of, so reliance smart you have which is of the FMCG. So, that means that is a conglomerate because they are into different products altogether and different services. If I say Tata's of course, they are conglomerate because they are into automobile, they are into steel, they are into many things is not it BPO they are into many things. So, same way the companies where they try to uh, you know diversify themselves into altogether a new uh, segment or new product, new market, new services then they become the it becomes the conglomerate diversification. Concentric is in the similar line in the same market, but you are of course, adding different products to your product line then that is about concentric diversification. Then we have other type of uh, expansion strategy where you are expanding through integration very important. What is integration? The expansion through integration means combining one or more present operation of the business with no change in the consumer groups. So, basically what are you doing? You are expanding your business operation by combining one or more present operation. So, in the sense for example, uh, for your business say uh, you are into automobile for example, 
then for automobile you need different components for assembling now instead of buying it from somebody or you are basically buying that entire company which is actually producing a component for you that means you are expanding through but your product is same basically you are selling the same car to the to the consumers but only thing what you have done in the background earlier the component was bought from a different company okay they were your suppliers now what are you doing you are buying that entire supplier that means they become your uh, subsidiary now so they will uh, then it becomes your part of your business okay so that is like you are uh, combining one or more present operation or maybe sometimes you are uh, you are selling you are manufacturing something and it is sold to somebody else and further they will be processing so what do you do you are buying them so that the next level of production also happens within your organization so that is called as integration this combination can be done through value chain so we have something called value chain analysis where you are dividing each process into different separate section and you are analyzing so where the things can be altered where it can be integrated so here in the integration we are basically doing that through the value chain analysis we are seeing in which section in which operation in which part integration can be possible so in integration again it could be a vertical integration or a horizontal integration in the vertical in vertical integration it could be forward integration or backward integration what is uh, expansion through integration in that what is this vertical or what is this horizontal in, uh, integration so vertical integration is where in your business operation either you are buying or you are being part of your consumers or you are buying the company which were your suppliers okay that means the operation is going this way where either you are combining with your next level uh, that is your consumers or you are combining with your suppliers so they are becoming part of your business okay you are integrating with them so before they were separate segment or like they, they were separate apart from the business now they are part of your business it's part of you now that is vertical in the horizontal so where you are integrating of the different businesses of the same type same level okay you are also a manufacturer say car manufacturer and somebody else was also there so you are merging with them and then you are having your operation so you are merging of the with the same level okay then that is called as the horizontal integration then in the vertical integration as i said in the value chain in your production process in the value chain if you are combining with the next level of operation that means after your product passes through in order to uh, suppose uh, you take the help of you used to take the help of some other packaging company to do the packaging and warehousing of your products for example before now what you do you are combining with them okay so that that packaging and warehousing is part of your business now okay they have become it's part of you before they were xyz company now it is part of your subsidiary okay that is forward integration backward integration is where basically uh, they were your suppliers in your value chain they were different organization they were supplying either they were supplying you electricity or they were supplying you some raw material they were supplying you some components now you are integrating with them that means you are taking them as part of your business so that they have now they have become your subsidiary or like you have got merged with them so they are part of your business now okay so vertical integration where in the value chain either you are integrating with the next level of operation or you are integrating with the previous level or your suppliers then that is called either forward or backward then that's part of your vertical integration so again for all these whether you are integrating with uh, through vertical or horizontal integration for all this you need funds to buy them or to take the 
uh, to buy their shares or to acquire them to get uh, acquire them so you need investment so that's why it is part of your expansion strategy now to have a quick recap of what we discussed so far the reason for the expansion could be survival high profits increased prestige economies of scale larger market share social benefits there could be so many like why you want to go for expansion or growth maybe you have excess funds with you you want to reinvest them you want to increase your scale of operation you want to expand your market you want to uh, you want to have higher profits sometimes they have given just for survival also like if you are small then maybe there's a chance that you may be taken out or you may be washed out of the market so you want to gather more power so you are expanding your operation to compete equally in the market now obviously expansion always goes with the expectation of the higher profits then increased prestige where you are taking the subsidiaries you are being the parent company so that those companies would operate according to your wishes okay then of course to enjoy the economies of scale the benefits of large scale operation so you can reap them because of being expanding then larger market share so you want to grab more market suppose uh, say recently we have seen in the banking sector many banks combining together all the state banks becoming a uh, state bank of india and after that also many banks combined together and they have started operating as one unit that means basically you are having the larger market share even the telecom companies and uh, so many other companies where they are expanding their operation they are getting into this integration or diversification or through concentration so they are enjoying this economies of scale and also aiming at the larger market share and also they can have uh, better social benefits can have good customer satisfaction can give them more better services so because of all these reason they go for this expansion then expansion strategy is adopted by those firms who have managers with high degree of achievements and recognition okay the aim is to grow irrespective of the risk and hurdles coming in the way so here i would like to mention in the previous session we have discussed about stability strategy isn't it so it's quite opposite to stability strategy in the stability strategy you just want to maintain the status quo you want to maintain the same production with the same market with the same type of operations okay why because you want to keep your risk minimal the moment you want to change the moment you want to uh, invest more or expand your operation diversify into new business or get uh, integrated with uh, somebody else so all these requires huge investments at the same time it has its own uh, you know investments along with the comes with the uh, risk isn't it so here this can happen you can go for this expansion strategy only if you are having that high degree for achievement and you are ready to take the risk so that you want to achieve whatever so called higher profit or you want to achieve larger market share or whatever your main objective is if you are ready to take risk then you can go for this expansion or growth strategies then as i have told in the beginning itself there are five expansion strategies or usually there are five ways in which this expansion strategy can be uh, followed or can be done we have concentration diversification integration cooperation and internationalization in this session we discussed about the first three so what happens in concentration basically you are expanding your operation in the same market with the same product or maybe with the same product you are entering into the new market or you are entering into a new market with the same product or in the same product you are going to a different market so you basically your uh, level of operation would be i mean your product would be similar so only thing you are expanding the scale when it comes to diversification 
you are diversifying your production or your uh, goods and services. Again in that it could be a concentric diversification or conglomerate. Concentric is where the products are related. Okay, You are having a soap uh, manufacturing so you also uh, diversified into hand washes. So soap and hand wash similar isn't it. So that is called as concentric diversification. Whereas conglomerate you are entering into altogether a new field. Okay, You are going into a completely separate field of operation. Say you were into automobiles, now you entered into say electronics. So those two are different uh, industries uh, altogether. So that is conglomerate diversification. Then when it comes to integration, so here basically you are with the, uh, this comes you are in the same market, you are in the same uh, product, only thing you are integrating with the value chain, you are integrating the uh, operation. So either you are integrating with your customer or you are integrating with your supplier or you are integrating with your competitor. So where you are making your business unit stronger. Okay. So but you are serving the same product in the same market only thing your operations have changed. So either you are buying your supplier and making it part of your business or the next level of your value chain like your uh, your uh, warehouse you are acquiring so that that warehouse becomes yours and you will keep your products instead of sending it to somebody else's warehouse yourself uh, you know either buying some uh, some warehouse company or you are starting your own warehouse as your operation so there you are uh, integrating forward integration backward integration or it could be horizontal integration where you are at the same uh, type of operation. So we have two more uh, expansion strategies that is cooperation and internationalization that we will discuss in the next session. So these are some of the references which I have used for preparing it as well as you can go through with them for having further clarification. Thank you very much. We will meet in the next video.